home every summer feel strange to me because I started, you know, traveling and seeing different parts of the country, different parts of the world. I mean, I've been as far as Paris, Germany, France, and Alaska, um, Hawaii. All this because of drum corps or marching band or jazz band. And um, this is something that I, you know, at... I talk with my staff about and, and the kids that are involved with the group that, you know, I just want to have this opportunity for my son, something to give to the rest of the community because the opportunities that I had as a child are no longer here. Um, they're not, you know, out there for the kids today to do. There's so much more going on, computers, technology. Um, MTV, there's so many different things for kids to do um, besides holding an instrument and go, actually going home and physically learning that craft of that instrument. And to me, I, I think that's as a whole, as a person who started out as a young member in this community playing for so many people performing, without that, you know, um, I don't think I would have been, you know, able to to. to just have a stability in my life where I'm disciplined. Um, I know how to, you know, stay on top of things. I love multitasking. All these things are a culmination of being a part of the drum corps. Things that they instill in you as soon as you join the corps or the marching band program. Um, and that's something that you know I instill in my staff, and the staff does that. You know, as they're teaching, they're, they they try to keep that you know that message that. That, that knowledge going into the members as they're teaching them at every rehearsal, you know, you know, uh, commitment, discipline, um, staying on task is so important in life, in just everyday life. So drum corps as a whole, um, if I didn't have a staff of guys around me, members who bought into the system, um, it's just like if you were on the NBA team, if you didn't have members on that team or players on that team that didn't buy into the system of the team, the team as a whole wouldn't be a team. I've been playing with this particular group for almost a year, actually. Um, I started out as the bass tech and did that for about uh, 11 months. I've been playing tenors for them for approximately a month. Yeah, I'm, I'm a bass drummer. I, was a, I started out as a cymbal player for two years in the Spartans, um, and that's when I met uh, Darwin. Um, he was a 14-year-old little small kid, about 4'11", and um, he really developed into a serious drummer, um, serious rudimental drummer, as well as a set player. And I went from cymbals to playing some serious rudimental bass drum, and that's, that's when I learned, you know, the, the next level of drumming, and, you know, and how Darwin pushes and stuff. That's when I went from being just your average high school drummer to being somebody that went, you know, I went from uh, barely being able to make a high school line to, you know, my, my freshman year. And my sophomore year, say mid-sophomore year, I started teaching my line. And, you know, and, and I, I hold Darwin somewhat accountable for that, you know, just the way that guy pushes you to the next level. He demands it from you. And so that's kind of, you know, that's uh, what instilled me to, to, to keep going. 
he's been playing for years. Um, throughout that year, the first year I met him, he really developed into a um, a disciplined player and, and a player that really wanted to seek the knowledge and get more knowledge through whatever you could spoon feed him and he would just run with everything that you gave him. Um, he's one of my best friends. He's a great guy. Um, he works with the bass ensemble. He just started with us this year and um, I'm, I'm excited every time just working with these guys because these guys are a part of my design team as well as my overall team to figure out things as you know on, on a hold from for the music. You know, I've had the, um, the the blessed time to work with a guy named Spanky Hopkins here for over 20 years, who is my assistant, who pretty much runs the bass ensemble or the pit ensemble. He's a, the main writer for the front ensemble, which is instrumentation of marimbas, vibes. Um, we have drum set, we have the bass, guitar, guitar. We have um, you know your your bells timpanis, your concert bass drum, which is the 32 inch bass drum, that's really big, you know, it carries sound really well, far away, um, that's played with a gong, um, all that instrumentation, Spanky pretty much is the guy in charge of that. Um, my role is usually pit instructor, usually the front ensemble, which contains all the instruments that cannot be marched, like drum set. Um, keyboards like marimba, vibes, xylophone, bells, you know, basically the works that contains percussion instruments that cannot be carried, like timpani and things. Um, this guy has been a genius um, ever since I've known him. He's been playing around Portland for years, you know, with church or with uh, local groups, performing, doing plays, as well as he's been a really good, you know, friend of mine working with um, high school groups. We've taught Sunset High School, Grand High School, as well as Marshall High School, Skyview High School, Hudson Bay High School, and Columbia River High School over in Vancouver. Um, we've been working with Portland, Beaverton schools, and Vancouver schools now for over 15 years um, as, as a partner in, um, in, in this venture. And um, what we did as a whole this year, you know, we, we kind of took a show concept without the front ensemble and wrote everything on a CD for the front ensemble so that we could limit our instrumentation and the instruments that we would need to actually take to each performance. And this is something that was new to me, a new idea that I came up with and I shot the idea just, you know, to Spanky and Spanky came up with the, the track and the lay down for the music um, for for the show, and it, it just came out beautiful. Um, it's an amazing show this year, and hopefully, you know, we'll, we'll get a chance to, you know, keep developing the show and maybe, you know, take it to another level um, with the ensemble, with the front ensemble. And um, it's like one of the most difficult sections. Mostly people think like the front line, but mostly the pit, on, pit ensemble is a very difficult section. It's not easy at all. Um, really have to listen while they march and maneuver in the back. So we really have to have a lot of listening skills. Although we don't march, we have bigger music responsibilities, especially at a, especially at a compet competitive level. We have to do a lot more than usually what the symphonies and the, mostly the small percussion ensembles. We have to put a lot more energy in, in what we do.